Good morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. I am so glad that you came to join us today. Today, my special guest comes all the way from Virginia Beach. And, and every now and then I get I get to interview people right in the town I live in. And uh, some people ask, Andy, how do you get your guest all the time? And I go, I don't know all the time. Uh, let me just tell you a great quick story before I introduce you to uh, to, to to Elder McRae. He, uh, I, I, somebody in our church says, "Hey, Andy, I got somebody who should be good on your good on your podcast." I says, "Really? Let me give me their name." Somebody passed in church, just passed me in the hall, and gave me their name. We got, got connected, and sure enough, here we are. And uh, author, uh, he's authored several books. Uh, Elder McRae from Virginia Beach, glad to have you with us today. Thank you, sir. I'm so glad to be on. It's exciting. Uh, I was just thinking about Mr. Lambert, and he's attending some more of my leadership classes. And so it's such a small world. Um, it's not often that I meet people of faith there in the shipyard while I'm working, you know, teaching on leadership. But uh, we just connected. He loves what I'm sharing. And so some kind of way we started talking about faith and like what church you go to. And this thing, you know, we're talking about the Lord and then it's like, well, hey, this guy has his podcast. So anyhow, I'm so excited, uh, just blessed to be here and uh, just really privileged to be able to do the work that I do uh, local and abroad. Good, good. Now, you're you're an author, but you also served our, our great nation in, in the Navy for many years, too. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did 20 years, four months, 10 days. I wasn't keeping track. Or Who's counting on that, right? <laughs> Thank you for I'll your service. It. Thank yes, you sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, just great. This, this has just been great. Um, so a little bit, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but um, the, the thing that makes me attractive and kind of has me traveling and doing different things and invited to different circles is this book that I wrote. And I am currently in the process of doing the sequel. So once the sequel is done, there, Andy, we'll have to talk again. But um, I was able to uh, put this book together with the help of God and his servants, uh, this book called Parent Leadership for Today. And so um, it's, uh, I've just been growing in the discipline of, of just kind of this construct of parenting and leadership. And so um, I'm just happy that God has given me something to write about to talk about and uh, the impact that it's making, the lives that it's changing, and really what this whole thing is about. Um, and so if you would ask me, say, so what is this, you know, what is it based on or what is the whole thing? And really through my studies and just um, as I keep talking about it, what I've come to discover is that this whole construct is really biblical, biblical in the sense that if you look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, and that's when I, when I do parent leadership seminars, I let people know that this whole construct is really biblical. It's from the proverbial writer. And he says, a good parent leaves an inheritance or his children's children. But the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so I really kind of focus on when the writer in Proverbs, and when, when Solomon makes a statement, who happens to be the wisest man in the world, the most richest man in the world, uh, you know, at the time when he, when he writes that, what is he saying? What is he saying when he makes the statement that a good parent? And so I just think that's something to ponder, something to ponder in 2022 something to ponder just kind of where we're at as a nation, um, just dealing with families, what kind of inheritance are we leaving with our children? Um, and that's, that's, that's something, I think that's something we can stick a pin in and, and have dialogue because um, if we're able to do that right, then I just think that a lot of things will work themselves out if that is the foundation of our parenting. We allow that to be the foundation of, of course, Christ is Christ. But I mean, when I think about parent leadership and leaving this, leaving this inheritance, what is that all about? And it's not, and it, it's not always just financial. Is that right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Right? <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, and that's that is that is quite insightful. You think of inheritance, you think about a boat, right? I'm thinking about house. I'm thinking about money and all those kind of things, right? But I, but Solomon helps us because he says, but the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And so the B clause says, well, if I parent right, then the wealth will be laid up. I, I really don't have to worry about the wealth if I parent right. 
So, so, so what is that, you know? And so ultimately, when we look at what kind of inheritance, inheritance can be tangible. I mean, I, don't, don't get me wrong. I got some money set aside, something happened to me, my wife has said, if something happened to both of us, my children are gonna get, they'll get a few coins, Andy, but you know, and I know about millions, but they'll get a few coins. <laughs> but uh, there's some money there, but I'm more excited about what, I've been, what I have invested and, and what I see the fruits of my labor with all three of my children. Um, because I'm fully convinced I'm one of the richest men in the world right now. When, when, you, when you talk about leadership, parents taking leadership, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, is there a problem with parents trying to be friends with their kids now these days more than being leaders? Is that? Sure, yeah. Yeah, that is a very real thing that we got parents um, that want to be friend. Uh, they they want to be a friend before a parent. Nothing wrong with being a friend. Right. Matter of fact, I think that's wonderful. Um, Matt, you know, that's like kind of we look at you know when you look at parenting and then it's done right. That once your children grow up, leave home, you know, become fully autonomous uh, and and they're living their lives then I think that the greatest compliment and the highest order, they could see you as a friend. Uh, you know, Jesus in John 15 says, I no longer call you servants. He says, I call you friend. So I think that the friendship of, of, of parent and child, if, if it's done right, to, to me, that's like, wow, that's, that's awesome, uh, you know, if it's done right. But yeah, but, but when you put the friend first and the parent second, then we do have problems um, in, the, in, the, in the mentoring, the coaching, the parenting that should be done, doesn't get done. And um, we end up with a deficit and a lot of problems. What, what's some other revelations that people have gathered and just been surprised and enlightened uh, with, with your, your work with leadership, parent leadership. Okay, so yeah, in the book there, basically I, I, I you know, I preach and teach and sh when I do the sharing is that it's kind of, you kind of need to know where you're at in your parenting style. And so in the book, there's a survey that kind of lets you know, well, you know, what, what kind of style do you parent? Because there are some writers that have shared that when we look at the friction that's within the home between the, 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 the son and the father, or maybe the, daughter and a mother, it's not that our children, you know, your child might say that they hate you, but really what they don't like is how we parent. They don't like the leadership. They, the child loves you, but your leading is that becomes the problem. And so in the book, um, I clearly indicate there's four different types of parenting styles in general that, that most people gravitate to in some fashion or other. And that is, is that we're either authoritarians um, we can be permissive in our parenting, we can be unengaged, or we can be participatory in our parenting. And so there's a survey that you do when you answer these questions. And what I've come across is that there's a lot of parents, especially the military like me, are authoritar they're authoritarians. And so they try to run their house like they're running their business, like they're running sailors, like they're running, uh, you know, cadets, whatever, uh, soldiers. And so um, that authoritarian approach, uh, you know, you look in some sense, there's some advantages, some good stuff, but then there's some disadvantages. And so um, what I've discovered is, is that parents either, they, they either kind of, author, they're authoritative, I'm the parent, I'm the mom, I'm the dad, you do what I tell you to do, and you know, what I say go and, and nothing is discussed. Or I find the parent who says, well, I just want to be a friend, I, I don't want that at all. And so then I just, matter of fact, I don't really want to attach any kind of rules or regulations. I just kind of want Johnny to figure it out. I just want Maria to experience life and figure it out because I, I want them to love me. I, I want them to, to, to share and talk to me. So, uh, so, so we have them that are very permissive in the parent. Um, so I have them that are kind of very authoritative, kind of drill sergeant. Then I have them that are very permissive. And really it's, it's like, you know, can, can we find a happy medium? Yeah. The happy medium is the participatory parenting. You know, I, I often, and I, I've used this in several types of teaching throughout the years, several types of teaching, the pendulum approach, that the pendulum swings one way and swings the other. And often it, to get into middle, 
a, a person will swing way over the other way to to overextend themselves in 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 your example that you gave and they were too authoritarian and now they're too permissive and that too permissive and then they swing over to be too authoritative you know and it's not it's not human nature for us to stay balanced we need right. the help of god to do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that's that pendulum swings back and forth. And I've used it, like I said, in several different types of teachings through the years. And I, I when you were talking, I think, yes, so often I see folks go, I was raised by a military dad. And let me tell you, it's not going to be me. And they go way over the other side. <laughs> they go, yes, exactly. Yeah. And so that's not, it's kind of like we, we take a fool's approach when really um, you don't want to, you want to talk to your children. You don't want to talk at your children. Uh, you want to, you know, make it where they feel comfortable and that you can have dialogue. And when there's friction and there's disagreements, to be able to try to handle that. So do our children need rules and boundaries? Yes. You know, and, and, and a healthy children will press the limits. Healthy children will say, well, how far can I go? Right. And so um, that kind of pushing is saying that mom, I'm growing, dad, I'm growing. I got some of my own ideas and thoughts, right? And, and so if we're comfortable in our parents, we know who we are, then we can say, let's talk about that. Let's let's pull the string on that, son. Let's let's see how that'll play out, you know. And and, and there's no fear, no intimidation. Let's just talk about this. And so having some rules and regulations and things set up and some expectations and some goals and, and those boundaries, that's all good, healthy stuff. And, um, it, you know, if we did more of that in our parenting, um, I think there would be a lot less friction and anger and resentment in our homes. When you talk about your passion, and I often hear, and I, I quote T.D. Jakes a lot when, when T.D. Jakes used to, has said, find your passion and somewhere within your passion is often your purpose. And it's when I hear you talk about your writing, I hear your passion and I'm going, well, that's probably God, that's probably God's purpose in your life. Is that the driving force that, that you, you have in writing is just feeling that, that this is something you have to get out of you and put on paper? Yes, 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 most definitely. And what I've discovered is, I mean, that some people, you know, some people have thought that I was, the writing was in me all along, but the truth is, Andy, it, never, it wasn't. I was a math and science guy. <laughs> God birthed the writing in me <laughs> through some, to my own pain. You know, I wrote my first book called Blessed to Be Broken because it was some healing that needed to be done within me. And so with that penmanship, that opened up the door for me to write. I didn't even know I could write until I wrote my first book. And so now that is a thing that I understand that writing is one of those things that it crosses crease, uh, race, religion, it, 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 literature, literature just travels. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's incredible of the power of the pen and, and, and that it's ongoing. It's, it's alive, you know, it's like the word, the word is alive, it's quick. So, so the pen and, and what people are able to experience, that's the part that is just, so bless me is that when people get my literature and read it, it's they're in a, on the other side of the country and they don't really, they, you know, someone referred my book to them. And so that piece to help them is really the passion. And I got so much in me. It's just crazy. Speaking of so much in you, I'm going to put down below in the in the comment section some links where they could find your books and i say books it's there's more than one folks he's got some more books and and i, I even had some questions about another book we're not even talking about right now because i want to save some time to talk about that later at another time but he's got several books and he's working on 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 some books now i'd like for you to make sure you take the time look these up uh get a hold of them uh, read the reviews, look at the, look at what it says on Amazon and, and, exactly. and, and reach out and look at those. Now, uh, more important than all of that. And some of you who watch morning moments know exactly what I'm going to say right now. Uh, uh, elder, Mc, elder McRae's is, and is, by the way, his name's Clinton McRae Jr. In the books, you will find him under elder, but elder McRae, God has got him to to do he's got a plan purpose and hope for him and he's doing the very best he could follow through to do that we he needs your prayers 
And I want everybody who sees this interview to stop when this interview is over and, and don't just tell me, well, I'm going to pray for him sometime. Pray for him right now after this over is over. Because when, when the, the children of God get together and pray one for another, there's going to be great things that's happening in books, movies, songs, and whatever God has for us. So I want, I want you to take the time and, and pray for Elder Clinton right now uh, after you hear this and pass this interview on to other people. Uh, Elder, Elder McRae, it has been a thrill to be able to spend a little time with you this morning. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm humbled just to, to be here and, and, and to be a part of this form, uh, what God is doing in your life with, with Morning Moments. We're going to stay connected because I, there's some other other uh, books that you've got a sequel come and you've got some other things on the way. We're, we want to get you back here and talk about that as well. Uh, thank you for coming today. Okay. Love you. Appreciate you. And thank you for joining Morning Moments. And if you would, please keep coming back and may God richly bless you. <laughs>